Hello, welcome back. Today we're taking a look at the 10 camera component for a community member. Let's get started. All right, so this is not the prettiest test bed you've ever seen, but this is going to go ahead and show us how we can use a component to switch between 10 cameras by using buttons or the on-screen touch buttons. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show you the inside of the component and maybe give you an idea how I built it. So if you're trying to build one, you can, or of course you can use a link in the description below to go ahead and download this component and use it. But either way, I hope this video helps you with your component or setting up 10 cameras. So let's go ahead and jump into the editor. So here we are back in the editor and we have 10 cameras set up at various directions. So all of these are cameras. And then we have the component here and we have our mini panels here set up with buttons and this is backward and forward and then we have our monitor no big deal so let's look at the component really quick so the component has the number of cameras you're going to set up and all this does is if you have four cameras only set up you pick four and then when you're using the backwards and forwards button it won't try to go beyond four you're still going to have to go ahead and disable you know what i didn't do now that i think about it i did not disable the on-screen based on the number of cameras. Oh my gosh! So I guess we can do that now. But before we do that, I'm just gonna show you how it works currently, and then we can kind of try to fix it. Okay, so right now we have the number of cameras set, and all this does right now, unfortunately, set how many cameras you can go forward and backwards. So, you know, it'll loop around if you have five cameras, if you have 10, it will loop up to 10 cameras. So that's the idea for that. So what we need to do is also have this hide our on-screen controls for the additional cameras. <laughs> oh boy. So before we jump into the component, here's some other settings we have in here. We have the touch screen color, which is a hex, and this is using white noises uh, code to convert this hex into an RGB code, and I'll show you where that is. And then we have the touch screen highlight. So when you click the button, it will highlight in this color. And then we have the camera text, which says camera one, camera two, camera three, or whatever. And we can change the color of that text as well. All right, let's jump into the component. So here we are with the component. We have 10 camera inputs coming in, and then we have a path to each way to get to the monitor for each camera. And the way that works, if we come in here, is we're basically switching the paths. Paths, the P-H-T-H-S. To different uh, number true and falses. And so if you'll look like, so if we come over here, let's go to number one. So number one camera, the path is true, true, true and true and then that goes off to the monitor so that's basically what it's doing for everything is we are switching in between these different paths and then we can get to the monitor based on the camera selection pretty easy not too bad okay uh here we have white noises code you can use this he left this on the endoskull discord and you can go ahead and copy it and really easy to use you go ahead and set your your var and then you come over here and you say set screen color and then you have c color r and then c color g c color b i know it says c text but you get the idea and then that sets the color boom done lovely all right what else do we have here okay so that that was the easy part okay here was the hard part so for me i don't know if i'm doing this right but this is how i did it so if i did it wrong you can let me know, but it works. So what I have here is the mini instrument panels coming in and they go to a channel and then it has a pulse for each one. And so when you click the button, it pulses and that sends a Boolean that changes to the next camera. So it just pulses so that it doesn't keep switching because in some cases I was testing and it would like kind of freak out. So this is my solution, may not be the right way, but it's by way and it works. So some other issues when I was building this is I ran into the problem of the limitations of the Lua script. So when you have too many characters, of course, you can't write any more code. I've tried compressing it. I used the minifier and I just couldn't get enough code on one block. So I went to the Stormworks forum and ran into Penguin Zero who gave me a hand on how to hook these up because I did not realize that when you add more Lua blocks, they do not pass in the channel data. You have to physically pass in channel data. So Jay Baker 96 of the Stormworks forum also gave me some code, which helped with that process. So the code right here, uh, here's a little bit of it here and a little bit of here from Jay Baker. What it does is it brings in the input get number and the get bool and it sets a var and then it loops 32 times, which is 32 channels and sets 
the vars and then outputs the vars to the set number and the set bool, which goes to the next Lua block over here. So what it does is they're bringing in the channel data here, passing it to the next one and passing it to the next one. So I needed that because I didn't know how to do that. Because what I did is you can see, I broke up my code into three Lua blocks. So the first block is the camera switching code. And then the middle block is actually a lot more to do with coloring and drawing the uh, touchscreen. And then the first block is the actual touchscreen uh, checking data. I also had to make an extra one down here. Um, and I probably did this wrong, but this is the best way I could find where I added some Lua code down here, which is a touchscreen data for going backwards and forwards on the camera. And I had to do this because I couldn't get it to go to the next camera without it continuously pushing the button over and over again. So you would never just go one camera, you would go 10 cameras. All right, so with that out of the way, you have a pretty clear idea how this works. So the problem we have right now, after I did all of this mess to get it to work, the problem we have is we don't have a way to hide some of the touchscreen controls. So what we're gonna probably do is check where we use doo -doo 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 -doo, this little drop down select number of cameras which i believe is used here so where is it at right here select number of cameras so this is where i'm using it here to actually limit how many you can go forward and how many you can go backward and here's the code right here for that so that's great that works fine but it's not going to help us when we're trying to hide the camera on screen. And, and if you don't know what I'm talking about, let's go look at it right now. Here are instrument panel buttons, and we can go to camera two. And you'll see it says camera two up there. Okay, that's a terrible color, but you can see camera two. Camera three, camera four, camera five, ten, you know, and so on. And then we have our backwards button and our forwards button. And then on screen, of course, we can go to camera five or we can go backwards through the cameras or forwards through the cameras. Now, the unfortunate thing is after working all weekend on this thing, uh, I did not add the ability to take off buttons on the screen. So here, of course, when you're building it, you can make less buttons, but on the screen, we need to have a way to erase some of these buttons when we only have maybe four cameras. So let's see if we can write that code right now. So again, if we look at the component, we have select number of cameras, we have the colors. So we want, when we hit number four, we want only four buttons on screen. This you're gonna have to do manually, sorry. <laughs> it doesn't automatically make things disappear there. Now I know that over here in the camera switching code, right here, we have the number of cameras. And we're gonna use this setting to hide on-screen buttons, I think. Let's see how this works. All right, so if we look in our code over here, this is what? This is our coloring and showing code. Hmm. So we could add ifs. So if and number equals whatever, we could do show hide maybe? Hmm. This data right here is still gonna be watching the on-screen clicks. So I think what we have to do, and I could be wrong, is I think we have to hide some of these or disable some of these. Hmm, again, I have to say hmm. So I think this is where we want it. So if this if this is true, this means we're touching. We could check. What we can do is we can go ahead and comment this out. And let's just run it and see if when we click on button number one, with that code disabled, if it still changes the camera, because we don't want it to. We want it to be hidden. Okay, I'm gonna click on number one and see nothing's happening. It's not blinking or anything. So I think that's where we want to disable our touch code. So let's go back in there. And again, always disclaimer, I am not a scripter. So this is just enough information for me to be dangerous. And that's exactly what I do. So. If you're better than me at this, feel free to leave comments or links to uh, any of your code and people can take a look at that. But this is mine and uh, <laughs> this is my mediocre code, so enjoy. 
All right, so what this is doing is it is saying, get the number from this property text box, which is select number of cams, and we're setting it to the number of cams variable. All right, so now we wanna go ahead and disable down here. And I think what I'm gonna do is I think I can put an if right in here. If number of cams equal or greater than one, then we do this. Else, let's say, disable button. Okay, now this works great <laughs> right here, but we're gonna have to do this again for the colors. And hopefully we have enough, you know, characters to do all this. So let's find out. We're gonna go ahead. All right, so this is just gonna disable our buttons, or our touch buttons, but we can still see them. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and grab this little guy again, and we're gonna go into the color block. This is all color. So first off, we're gonna go ahead and copy our property right there, and hope, ooh, we are getting pretty tight right here. I don't know. This might be a problem, but we'll find out. So we're gonna do, I think we're gonna do an if on the outside. If number of cams, whoops, is greater than, I think it's greater than or equal to one. Then we're gonna go ahead and do all this. All right, so now I think this will kind of work. Let's, let's, let's just check, I don't know, not a professional. But let's say we have four cameras and let's spot. So if we come here, we get a nice blue code saying you screwed up. Oh, I forgot the ifs. <laughs> I forgot the ifs. Why did I do that? Never mind. Let's add the ifs. Ugh. Ta -da. And I forgot my ants too. Jeez Louise. All right, let's go ahead and test it again. And we have a set to four cameras. Let's see, do I get a blue screen? No blue screen. All right, so we set it to four cameras and we have four buttons and I can't click here, right? No. And I click here to change the camera and it goes back to one. Okay, now the problem we have here is we have this guy way out here no matter what. So what I think we're gonna do is we're gonna move this two right here and move this down one and that's the easiest way so we can get this component out the door and so we'll make it nice and lovely that way all right so now we have our backwards and forwards in place but you'll see we can't click them and why is that that's because we have to go back and change the size of the box and the position of the box in component so if we come down here and let's just cheat and grab, oh, I don't know, let's grab these two so I can cheat and look at them. And now we're going to go into our clicky code, which is not here, is it? Nope, not there. It's down here. We're going to go into our clicky code and cheat by pasting that there so we can come up here. And it's looking at 125, and we want the box at 2. 15 and we want the size of our box interestingly enough it's larger than it should be is 8 by 8 and 8 by 8 and the second box is 14 and 15 all right that should do it let's just clean this up a little bit and get rid of this draw function there we go. So if I did this right, and I make no guarantees, I should go ahead and be able to click on it and it'll be fine. There we go. Lovely, okay, and nowhere else is clickable. Okay, that is it, we did it. We added code to go ahead and do that. So, okay, so let's do one more test before we call this done. All right, so let's go ahead and do a test. Uh, we're gonna go ahead and add eight cameras Let's do a really dark red. Okay, so if everything works now, we'll be good to go. So now we have nice red buttons on the screen, eight cameras, and we can switch between them. 
switch between number four, number three, number two, and we go through these like that. And we can come over here and use our buttons. Awesome. And we can use our left, right. All right, so before we end this video, I just want to go ahead and show you how this is hooked up. So we have the composite coming out of the monitor and it goes into our instrument panel and the instrument panel goes to each one like this and then it goes into the component itself. Of course we have video coming from all the cameras inside and video going out to the monitor and of course electricity is all hooked up. So I just want to show you that. I'm going to upload this little test bed which makes it easier to hook up. Alternatively you don't have to hook these up at all. So if you wanted to, you could just cut these out, right? And you could have a nice touch screen for cameras without any buttons. Oh, it doesn't work. Ooh, let me think about that one. Oh, I know why, because I'm dumb. <laughs> because you have to hook up the component in. So I, I thought it would work. All right, so if you cut these out, <laughs> you do have to hook the component back up. You knew that though, didn't you? I bet you did. All right, so let me come back over here. And now we have a nice touch screen. I reloaded the colors, sorry. But there we go. All right, ta-da! So you can have buttons and touch screen or just touch screen and no buttons. All right, well, that's it for today. This is the 10 camera switcher and you can use the on-screen controls. You can use the buttons that are missing because I deleted them. And you can download both this test bed and the component on the workshop using the description below to find the links. That's it for today, and I'll see you next time. I want to be on TV. Can I be on TV? Ta-da! I'm on TV. I'm on TV. Bye!